Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're going to have a sphere that's radiating heat rather than heat being transferred across a conducting path. We have a sphere that has a certain amount of mass. It has specific heat C, density rho, and radius r. And it starts at some initial temperature T sub naught. And it's radiating heat into space, so we can assume that the temperature outside is near zero. So we can just ignore it. We're trying to find the time after it radiates heat for the sphere to reach half of its original temperature. And of course, we're going to need the equation dq equals mc dt, or delta t. And we're going to need the stefan boltzmann equation where the heat that is radiated out, dq dt, is equal to the... the uh, <coughs> and we're going to need the equation dq dt, the stefan boltzmann equation, where we calculate the amount of heat radiated, radiated out, is equal to the emissivity constant, the Boltzmann constant, the surface area, and temperature to the fourth power all multiplied together. Now, instead of writing dq, we're going to need dq equals mc dt. Now we have to be careful. This means that any heat added to the object is equal to mc times the temperature increase to the object. But if we take heat away from the object, then this will be a negative temperature increase or a temperature decrease. So on here, we're going to write this as minus mc dt is equal to, moving this to the other side, we get epsilon, we have sigma, a, t to the fourth power, and dt for time, the change in time. Now, of course, we want to separate the variables. We want t on one side, the time on the other side, so we have dt divided by t to the fourth power is equal to, bringing the negative to the other side, we have minus e sigma a divided by mc, and then we have dt. Now notice, we were not given the mass of the object. We're going to have to calculate that based upon what they've given us, because we realize that the density, by definition, is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which means that the mass will be equal to the density times the volume, which is equal to the density times 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we'll worry about that later. Right now, we'll just call it m. We're now able to integrate both sides of the equation. The left side will be integrated from the initial temperature, t sub naught, to the final temperature, which is t sub naught divided by 2 and here from zero to the elapsed time t. The right side is easy to integrate. Even the left side is not bad because this can be written as an integral from t initial to t initial divided by two of dt times t to the minus four power. Usually we write that the other way around. Well, let's make sure we do it correctly. Let's do it like this. <clears throat> so here we write t to the minus 4 power times dt, and that is equal to minus e sigma a over mc, and already integrated t evaluated from 0 to t. On the left side, when we integrate it, we get the following. On the left side, we will get t to the minus 3 divided by the new exponent, minus 3, evaluated from t initial to t initial divided by 2, and on the right side, when we plug in the limits, we get minus e to the sigma times a over mc times t. Now let's get rid of the minus 3 on this side over here. We bring it on the other side. That becomes plus 3, and we get rid of the minus 3. And so this becomes 1 over t cubed, evaluated from t initial to t initial divided by 2 is equal to 3e sigma a over mc times t. All right, we're getting close. When we plug in the limits on the left side, we get 1 over t initial cubed divided by 8, so I'm going to write the 8 in the numerator, minus 1 over t initial. Oh, t initial cubed, because when we bring that in there, we get that is equal to 3e sigma a over mc times time. And of course, since it's a common denominator, 8 minus 1 is 7. This becomes 7 divided by t initial equals 3e sigma a over m 
c, and of course that is cubed, can't forget the cube, times t. All right, what's next? Well, let's solve that for time, that's after all what we're looking for, and then we're going to have to get rid of m, since m was not part of the initial given, so we'll have to replace that by this. So let's go ahead and solve this equation for time now. So time is equal to, on the, on the other side we get 7mc, 7mc divided by, bring this to the other side, we get 3e, epsilon actually, or e sigma a t sub naught to the third power. And now we're going to replace m by this quantity right here. So when we do that, we get the following. We get time is equal to 7 instead of m, we're going to write density 4 over 3 times pi times r cubed, all divided by 3e sigma a t initial to the third power. And then we bring this down, that becomes 9, this becomes 28, so t is equal to 28 rho. Oh, not yet, not yet. We're not done yet. We can do one more simplification. Notice we can take the surface area of the sphere and solve for that, and I need a little bit of space, but maybe we can do it here. So a is equal to 4 pi r squared. Let's replace the area by that and see what we get now. We get t is equal to 28 density times pi times r cubed divided by 3 times 3, which is 9 e sigma Instead of a, we're going to write 4 pi r squared times initial temperature cubed. And then we can see that this 4 counts out one of those, that becomes 7. The pi's cancel out, r squared counts out one of those, or both of those. And so we have t is equal to 7 times the density of the sphere times the radius of the sphere divided by 9, the emissivity, sigma, that's all gone and temperature initial to the third power, and this is the time that it takes to get to half of its original temperature. Now, of course, if you know what the density of the sphere is, you know R, and am I missing something? It seems like I'm missing a C somewhere. There's a C here, I'm missing a C over here, and I'm missing a C over here, and I'm missing a C over there, because without the C, we won't be able to see how much heat it can retain, so the density, times r, times c, and e sigma, and the initial temperature, plug all that in, you can actually calculate the time that it takes to reach the half of its original temperature. And that's how it's done.